everyone. Thanks for taking the time to, to tune in and watch. Now, what we're going to talk about is law enforcement duty gear, and this is specifically the setup that, that I use. This is the, the duty gear that I wear every day that I'm at work. And uh, again, I, I am a full-time police officer, uh, and I work patrol the vast majority of the time, uniform patrol. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the belt, and we're going to talk about all the stuff that's in the belt, on the belt, whatever. And we'll also talk about some of the other stuff that I that I typically carry. And uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to start on this end of the belt, and we're going to work this way. So this side of the belt, this is my left-hand side, and then obviously this would be the, the right-hand side. So I'm a right-handed person. My gear is all set up for for primary use with the right hand. And what we'll do is we'll start off kind of talking about the foundation of the belt, uh, of the law enforcement duty belt, and that is the inner belt. Now, both the inner belt as well as the actual duty belt are made by Tactical Design Labs. And these belts are both uh, about nine years old now. And so makes and models may have changed, but the company that makes these are Tactical Design Labs. Now, if you don't know the way that law enforcement duty gear works, at least when you're talking in, in this configuration, is you would take this belt here, this inner belt, run it through the belt loops on your pants, and then your duty belt would go over the top of it and would be held in place with belt keepers. And a belt keeper is simply a, a snap that you run through there, you snap together, and it helps hold your two belts together, helps hold everything in place. Now, there are other things out there as far as holding your, your belts together. As you can see, the outside portion of this belt has hook Velcro, and the inside portion of the duty belt has loop Velcro. Now, if you were only running one or two pieces of equipment on your duty belt, you wouldn't necessarily need to have belt keepers, but with the amount of equipment that most officers keep on their belts, you're gonna need the belt keepers. You're gonna need to have at least a couple of them, and, and you're really gonna want them for, for anchoring down your guns and your magazines. So that's kind of how the, the belt system works. Now again, starting over here on, on the left-hand side of the belt, and probably what I'll do is, uh, because this has to be such like kind of a wide angle, I'll probably talk about it, kind of hold it up a little bit, and then, and then sort of move on. So first thing you come to, off of my belt, first thing on my left hand side are my pistol magazines, my extra pistol magazines. Now the idea behind the pistol magazines and where they're at and their orientation. So first of all, the way that the magazines sit in there is like this. So I've got bullets facing out, all right? So there would be the, can I hold that up there? So there would be the magazines in the slimline magazine pouch. Now, if you're sort of traditional as far as magazine orientation, you're probably used to your magazines running like this, with your bullets facing towards the belt buckle. What the slimline magazine pouch does is it allows you to carry the same number of magazines in a much smaller space. And for me, I'm not a very big guy, and so I need to have that, that extra space. Now, it is a little bit of a training issue getting used to these, but once you get used to orient, orienting your hand a different way, the draw with, with this pouch is fine. Now, I do use an open top magazine pouch. There's no flaps here, and what that does is it just allows a nice, uh, a, a nice good draw stroke, or uh, yeah, draw stroke for the magazines there. There's no flaps or anything like that getting in the way. Now, I really do prefer to have my magazines in a vertical position like this. Occasionally what you'll see are officers who use magazines in a horizontal configuration like this. Now, it can be, having your magazines like this, I could see how it would be very, or could be very effective as far as having a rapid draw for your magazines, but I think what it does is it kind of makes your drawing the magazines sort of hand dependent. And what I mean by that is if you're a right hand, if you're a right handed shooter, 
and then you would draw your magazines with your left hand and so if you set your magazines up in a horizontal configuration so that you could draw them with your left hand it would be very awkward if you had to draw one with your right hand for some reason so I, I like the vertical orientation I think it's much more ambidextrous than the horizontal uh, configuration now where am I at on time so when I draw the magazine out of the pouch the way this is set up and how I like to do it is what I'll do is with my left hand I'll come down I'll hit the belt buckle there and then when I come left the first thing I run into is the first magazine and I can go ahead and draw it so I draw that magazine and let's say for whatever reason I need to reload again again all I need to do is come down hit the belt buckle shift left and I'll hit a magazine so that's the the reasoning for having your magazines right next to your to your belt buckle like that is that way it allows you to have that um, under stress it's very easy for you to draw your magazines you don't have to run into anything else you don't have to try to interfere around anything else so that's why I like to run my magazines the way that I the way that I run them and, and where I run them so immediately behind the magazines is my flashlight this is a surefire G2X and there it is this is a flashlight so that runs right behind my magazines and again it's set up for a left-handed presentation or draw or whatever and I really like to run my flashlight up front again it allows it to be ambidextrous this is basically you know at 11 o'clock or so on my body I can get to it very easily if I need to use my right hand for any reason and you know if uh, if I'm in a fight, something like that, I rapidly have to clear a building and those kinds of things. I don't want to be reaching behind me to get a flashlight. I want that up front where I can get at it. Maybe I get knocked on my back or something like that. I want to have my light up front where I can get at it. And then immediately behind the flashlight is my is where I keep my taser. Now we use for tasers we use the X26P, which is just a, an updated version of the X26 taser. And the holster that I use for that is the Safari Land 6520 Taser holster. And it uses Safari Land's SLS rotating hood system to lock the Taser into place. So far with the X26P, I haven't had any, any deployments with it yet. We did just get them uh, earlier this year, but I haven't had any deployments with them. We use 15 foot cartridges there from taser and if you don't know if you're new to tasers or, or whatever the what taser does is it gives you gives you an option so when you disengage the safety as you can see a light comes on and then what also comes on I don't know if there's gonna be a good way for me to well what also comes on is a laser you guys can see that in the light there sorry I had to shift it back a little bit so that's what I prefer is to have the light laser combination if it's daytime and the light comes on that's fine it's not a big deal obviously that's very handy at night so I like to have the light laser combination set up on my taser you know you're if you're a taser guy your mileage may vary but that's what I prefer behind the taser is where I keep my radio that's just a Safari Land radio pouch and it's fixed it doesn't rotate it doesn't come off or anything like that it's just a fixed sort of universal radio pouch by Safari Land and then behind that I've got my handcuffs and both handcuff pouches are made by Safari Land and they are both open top pouches and so on this pouch I run a set of hinge handcuffs or I'm sorry chain handcuffs these are chain handcuffs and on this pouch I use hinge handcuffs now the hinge handcuffs are sort of my primary go-to handcuffs what I like about these is when I pull them out and I drop them they're ready to go I don't have to do anything else with them they're ready to go when I pull them out now with hinge hand or I'm sorry chain handcuffs when you pull them out you can see they do some rotating and that kind of stuff and I'm not a big fan of that I really prefer hinge handcuffs over chain handcuffs and both of my handcuffs are made by Peerless I, I like Peerless brand handcuffs these have both worked very well for me I haven't had any problems with them moving right along here is my duty holster this is the Safari Land 6320 it's an ALS holster and I really so far the the ALS system is is my favorite retention system for for guns I, I really really like it 
And for duty gun, what we're issued are Glock 21s and they are 45 ACP. I'll keep this out here. 45 ACP, they have 13 round magazines. We issued our guns with uh, Trijicon night sights. And then what is on there is a Streamlight TLR1 pistol light. And this light is a couple of years old. I'm sure they're, they're newer, they have newer models out there. So that's the that's duty handgun. There you can see, I've mentioned it before on the top, is some grip tape. And you can see that grip tape sparked up from training and that kind of stuff. So grip tape there on my duty gun. Ammunition department issued is uh, Federal Hydroshock 230 grain Hydroshocks. Coming in front of the pistol or pistol holster is a tourniquet. And this is the 1011 open top tourniquet pouch. And it's uh, injection molded tourniquet, tourniquet pouch. And so we issue cat tourniquets for active shooter gear, I just happened to put this one on my duty belt and how that runs in there is just like that. So there's that and then up in front of that is a Leatherman Surge and just a Leatherman pouch. So there's my duty belt and the gear that I keep on my belt. Kind of go into some of the accessories that I carry. These are my patrol gloves. These are outdoor research Overlord gloves, I think. Uh, and I really like these gloves. So they are suede, fake leather, whatever, and uh, nylon. There is some protection there, but it's not like over the top. I'm sure everyone has seen like the, the gloves with the hard plastic knuckles and that kind of stuff. These gloves don't have that. There's some additional material over the knuckles, but nothing crazy and then the palm has some some tackiness to it but it's not ridiculous you know it's not over the top and then on the top of the glove is the velcro closure now as far as gloves go i really like having a velcro closure that's on the top of the glove i find that that stays secured much better than gloves that have a velcro closure on the bottom now that's my mileage yours may vary but i really like having gloves with the velcro closure on top so those are my patrol gloves you know 90 percent of the time i keep those in my in my uniform pants i just keep them in my back left pocket usually and uh you know i've just um i i've had to search enough yucky people that I just keep gloves on me now all the time. So those are my duty gloves. Let's see. Pocket knife. This is the Columbia River Knife and Tool Hisatsu folder. And this, you know, just runs in a pocket. It's my pocket knife. Let's see. Sorry, I got a bunch of some, or some stuff behind me. My backup flashlight. This is a Surefire E1E. This is the Executive Elite. And uh, like I say, it's just a little backup flashlight. There's nothing like dropping your, your primary flashlight on the ground in the dark and not having a way to find it. So I keep a backup light, mostly for that reason, so I can find uh, my flashlight when I drop it. Keys, um, I just keep these in my pocket. Some guys and a number of companies make key keepers for your belt where you can clip them in and that kind of stuff, and key silencers. Those kinds of things. I really don't like that. Uh, I just, you know, have keep my car keys and a couple other keys in my pocket. And then uh, this is actually my extra handcuff key, my backup handcuff key. And this is made by Streamlight, and it's got like a little push light in there. So that's kind of a cool feature. So that you can see when you're handcuffing in the dark. To be honest, I've never used it in that capacity. So the, the push light portion, I mean, I've never used it when I'm handcuffing. Uh, I, I've used it to like find door locks and stuff like that, but I, I've never used it for handcuffing, but it is kind of cool. Uh, had a friend who retired from law enforcement give me that. So. That's cool. Watch, uh, Luminex watch, and there's nothing fancy about it. It tells the time and has the date on it. So it's, it's really high speed, but um, I do like this watch. This is this is all I need. I don't need to have a bunch of functions like uh, humidity and barometer and elevation, all that kind of stuff. I just need something that's going to reliably tell the time and the date. Um, survival bands, paracord. 
I think I've mentioned them before, uh, zebra pins. Maybe I haven't. This is my duty pin. And as you can see, I have had this pin quite a while. I mean, there's not, not even any writing on it anymore, you know, where they have like the brand and stuff. Um, really like these pins. And for law enforcement, you know, work, law enforcement writing, I really like having a fine tip. You know, we often have to write through citations that have uh, multiple copies and stuff like that. And so I like having a pen that can, that can easily, or a tip that can easily do that, that can get through all those carbon copies. And then last but not least is my handcuff key. Uh, I've had this one a long time. I think this is made by Gulls. It's got a pocket clip in it. And uh, what I do is in my uniform shirt, I keep my, my pin and my handcuff key just in the same little uh, key slot in my uniform shirt. So, so there it is. That's, that's what I basically carry when I'm on duty. You know, throw in a couple of things like um, some nitrile gloves and, you know, little stuff like that. But this is, this is the bulk of what I carry on me every day. And so this is sort of foundational for additional videos that are going to come out, you know, like active shooter stuff and those kinds of things. Um, but uh, this, is, this is sort of my, my foundation. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, uh, throw them down there below. I'll... I'll get to them and that kind of stuff. If you, you like the content, you know, like and share and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. So let's see, let's see, let's see. I like this one. All right. My life is simple. My food is plain and my quarters are uncluttered cluttered in all things. I have sought clarity. I face the troubles and problems of life and death willingly. Virtue, integrity, and courage are my priorities. I can be approached but never pushed, befriended but never coerced, killed but never shamed. And that's from Admiral Yai Sun Shin. And so I'm um, not sure exactly where he falls into history, but uh, I think that's a very good quote. Again, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. Thanks.